டாக்டர் சென்ட்ராஜ் ராய்சந்த் ஃபவுண்டர் சான்சலர் ஜெயின் டீம் டிபி யூனிவர்சிட்டி டாக்டர் சுந்தர்ராஜன் ப்ரோ சான்சலர் டாக்டர் ராஜ் சிங் வாய்ஸ் சான்சலர் ரிஜிஸ்ட்ரார் டீன்ஸ் மெம்பர்ஸ் ஆஃப் த போர்ட் ஆஃப் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் அகடமிக் கவுன்சில் ஃபேக்கல்ட்டி மெம்பர்ஸ் அண்ட் சப்போர்ட்டிவ் ஸ்டாஃப் எஸ்டீம்டு கெஸ்ட் மைடிய ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் லேடிஸ் அண்ட் ஜென்டல்மேன் I deem it a privilege to be invited to address the 11th convocation of Jain deemed to be university. I would like to thank Dr. Chandra Chiraichan, founder and chancellor and other members of the management for extending this honor to me. I would like to use this opportunity to greet all the graduating students and recipients of various honors and their proud parents on this august occasion in the horizon of higher education jain is shining as a bright star thanks to the missionary seal of your chancellor dr chenraj his perennial urge to think big his unbounded energy to galvanize human potential into purposeful action and his unbroken focus towards goals our unique demonstrations of a rare leadership today one can see his influence all across the multiple endeavors of this institution characterized by excellence and erudition recognizing the dynamic nature of the curriculum innovative pedagogical approaches introduction of new areas of study of relevance not only for jobs but also of societal importance and creating most modern infrastructure jain has acquired its rightful place among the leading institutions of higher education well known for their preeminence further your university has expanded and expanded considerable efforts to ensure that teachers perform to their best by creating an enabling environment and extending such of the amenities and facilities that will make the student life enjoyable and memorable on the campus within a short time of achieving the deemed university status jain can be proud of many accomplishments like nurturing sports personalities of exceptional caliber and a handful of globally recognized young scientists Jane's leadership in the development of entrepreneurship and its research for is to unravel the ancient culture of our land are distinct indeed this university today has truly become a melting pot of a multidisciplinary engagement that beckons solutions to real life problems but can also see several initiatives to integrate knowledge across multiple disciplines as part of a holistic approach to education about which i'll talk a little later my dear graduates over the last 2 years you have demonstrated an undefeatable spirit of adapting to the changes forced by covid and yet progressing you are learning under the most trying circumstances i'm sure this spirit of unwavering devotion to one's duty will surely ensure your success in life it is highly gratifying to note that the faculty and the management of this university had acted with such sense of responsibility and concern that the university has lost no time to prevent interruption in the progress of your studies using the power of technology you can be really proud of belonging to such an alma mater i commend the efforts of your missionary chancellor dr chandraj royson and the able support of professor and pro chancellor dr sundar rajan the vice chancellor dr raj singh and all other eminent members of the management team you also have an exceptionally accomplished and erudite faculty many of whom have research degrees needless to emphasize this is also a reflection of the quality of education that you impart since all of us strongly believe that bringing education and research together creates a research culture with its own ability 
to prepare the future generation who can think original, generate innovative ideas and create new knowledge on the one side and on the other side elevate the quality of education to higher levels. My dear young graduates, today marks an important day in your lives and a significant milestone in your life's journey. Entering into this institution facing intense competition, you have pursued your academic work with great dedication and through your hard labor and commitment to high standards, you earned your degrees and awards. It's a moment of pride for you as much as it is for your teachers, parents and those who have had any part in shaping your life so far. You can record with your mission if our higher education began here with great passion. It will not end until you feel fully confident of meeting uncertainties and challenges of the life's laboratory and dealing with successes and failures with an equanimous attitude. I am sure each of you has different dreams. You should never give up your dreams and aspirations. Those aspirations that will drive you to higher levels of achievement and make your life purposeful. The perpetual search for knowledge and ideas had been the hallmark of our intellectual heritage. The following quotation from Rig Veda very effectively underscores the same. Ano badraha kradamo yandu vishwadaha. Let noble thoughts come from everywhere, unhindered and overflowing. The vision of India's new educational system, the National Education Policy 2020, has been crafted to ensure that it touches the lives of each and every citizen consistent with their needs and necessities and their aspirations besides creating a just and equitable society. I may add, that this policy in its final stages was reviewed very critically by the Honorable Prime Minister Sri Modi ji. I may further point out that several interesting, insightful and pragmatic suggestions were made by the PM which have been duly reflected in the final version of the policy, making it a truly transformational one. The NEP 2020 provides an integrated yet flexible approach to education. It has kept the interconnectedness of the various phases of education in mind and how the same will enable continuity, coherence and processes to ultimately realize an end-to-end -end educational roadmap for the country. It also includes an articulation of a broad view of education encompassing the holistic development of the youth with special emphasis on kindling their creative potential in all its richness and complexity. I would like to cite a few elements of NEP 2020 among others that could be of interest to you. This is the International Year of Basic Sciences for Sustainable Development. The direction of the Global Education Development Agenda is reflected in the Sustainable Development Goal 4, SDG 4, of the 2030 Agenda for sustainable development. The SDG 4 seeks to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all by 2030. We have duly reflected this aspect of a universal resolve in our educational policy in NEP 2020. In NEP 2020, the major emphasis is given to the aspect of holistic multidisciplinary education as a foundational component in the undergraduate level. Undergraduate degree will be either of three or four years with durations with multiple exit options within this period with appropriate certifications. A certificate after completing one year in a discipline including vocational and professional areas or a diploma after two years or a bachelor's degree after three years as a four-year multidisciplinary bachelor program provides opportunity to experience the full range of holistic and multidisciplinary education with focus 
on chosen major and minor as per the choice of the student. The four-year undergraduate program will provide students with opportunities to explore their interests and develop a broad base. I also want to stress the holistic aspect which aims to develop all capacities, not only just intellectual, but aesthetic, social, physical, emotional and moral capacities in an integrated manner to create a well-rounded individual. Such an approach is necessary to provide the kind of education that is required for the 21st century. The present silo-based approach to undergraduate education must therefore transform into an integrated, multidisciplinary, holistic approach to liberal education. There is evidence that certain kinds of outcomes associated with integrative approaches in higher education, including written and oral communication skills, ethical decision-making, critical thinking, and the ability to apply knowledge in the real-world settings are the type of educational outcome that could man many jobs demand today. Job seekers have been often faced with demands that go beyond deep technical expertise or familiarity with any particular technology. There is a search for well-rounded individuals with holistic education who can take on complex problems and understand the needs, desires and motivations of others through integration of learning across disciplines. Thus, the notion of a knowledge of many arts or just liberal arts, which is truly a legacy of the ancient Indian educational system, is being brought back. Because it is exactly the kind of education that is required for the 21st century. I am sure that the vision of this university will expand further in the coming years to derive the best of a liberal education program, including undergraduate research. Where can we find better ambience than in your university to pursue study on different perspectives in science or interface between science and technology and social systems, or even examining cultural dynamics of new economic systems. As India aspires to grow and sustain a large and vibrant economy and uplifting its society, one of the key elements to its successful realization is to have a robust ecosystem of research and innovation. The present inadequacies in this context are very much evident through the low number of researchers in India, which compares very unfavorably with the other top 10 economies in the world, with all its attendant impacts on publications, patent applications, and industrial growth involving indigenous technologies. The policy thus highlights the critical need for better managing the research at all levels, pure research, applied research, translational research, and research to address specific needs of industry, social problems, strategic demands, and many such requirements. This management of research will be provided by the National Research Foundation, NRFV, designated as, whose primary role will be to nurture a vibrant research ecosystem through adequate funding, mentoring, and careful monitoring. NRF will support multidisciplinary research in arts and humanities, social sciences, sciences and mathematics, engineering and technology, including educational technology. NRF can create unique opportunities to universities like yours, which will enable India to become a more competitive knowledge economy, an important consideration in the context of the Atmanirbhar mission and vision of our Honorable Prime Minister. The policy has brought forth a noble scheme to provide flexibility in making academic choices of courses and institutions and choosing the appropriate time in one's career to learn what one wants with appropriate credits at all stages. The Academic Bank of Credits proposed by the NEP 2020 promises to be a game changer. It works on the principle of multiple entry, multiple exit, 
as well as any time learning, any where learning and any level learning. It will facilitate the integration of the campuses and distributed learning systems by creating student mobility within inter and intra-university system. The process does not rule out sharing of credits between public and private institutions. The academic bank of credits lends itself to lifelong learning opportunities, thereby enabling pay everyone to be relevant to the needs of the hour, most importantly to the needs of jobs. Teachers are the central pillars on which all these ambitious plans rest. NEP 2020 has given considerable attention to teachers, to their initial preparation, conditions of work and their continuous professional development while charging them with critical responsibility of translating the vision of NEP 2020 into outcomes for students, for society and for the country. The initial preparation of school teachers will move into departments of education within universities and I would like to urge the Jain University to consider setting up a center of excellence in education to offer BED and MED courses to prepare state-specific school teachers, including subject teachers. This could be very well facilitated through the large number of qualified faculty in the different disciplines that you already have on the campus. Over the past 20 years, it has become quite clear that the usefulness of technology in education is nowhere near the kind that many technology enthusiasts had imagined. And despite much evidence to the contrary, continue to push for. We sense that this is partly because of an inadequate grasp or weighing of the complexity of the human process of learning and education. The NEP 2020 is deeply informed by all these realities and to address each of these together. It makes an explicit commitment to ensuring the effective use of technology, including advanced technologies like artificial intelligence and virtual reality in all spheres of education, teaching and learning process, in education administration and planning, and in assessment. It does this while equally explicitly committing to the centrality of the teacher in education and considering technology as an aid to the teacher. It is also a recognition of the persistent digital divide which has come out so sharply with this unfortunate pandemic today. To enable this necessary fine and effective balance, it envisages the establishment of the National Educational Technology Forum, NETF, with the mandate to provide independent evidence-based advice to central and state government agencies on technology-based interventions, build intellectual and institutional capacities in educational technology, envision strategic thrust, and articulate new directions for research and innovation. In our view, the NETF will play a key role in ensuring that we put technology to the best use in education. In this connection, Jane could consider hosting a Center of Excellence in Educational Technology and work closely with the proposed National Education Technology Forum, the NETF. In the process, Jane could provide innovative and pioneering inputs towards these activities. I am much pleased to learn that Jane is embarking on implementing the national education policy from the coming academic year. It's also gratifying to note that after an eventful decade of achievement, the university has enhanced its vision, which is in harmony with the national education policy. I learned that this renewed vision is centered on shaping this university into a preeminent research university in tandem with academic programs which are reinforced with multi or interdisciplinary projects and entrepreneurial practices. It's important to note that this vision embraces global outreach of its programs, a quantum jump in choices to students initially through university-wide open electives, quality and outcome focus, all of which can be truly transforming. What has fascinated me in this unique way 
in which Dr. Chandraj has thought of motivating you to develop a thorough understanding of the NEP and explore the innovative ways of implementing to it by means of a contest that generously rewards the qualifying participants. Bangalore has a special place in my heart, particularly since I moved my professional activities from Ahmedabad where I completed my doctoral work at the Physical Research Laboratory working with Dr. Vikram Sarabhai. I was introduced into India's satellite program in 1972, which was part of India's fledgling space program. The challenge was to build India's first satellite within 36 months as decided by the Government of India in collaboration with the then Soviet Union. Considering that we had very limited exposure to satellite technology, the engineering and the scientific teams had to learn to build from scratch. Related infrastructure had to be established, needing new insights and above all a culture of creating products with the highest level of quality and reliability were all alien to our then professional background. However, under the dynamic leadership of Professor U. R. Rao and with professional guidance from the then chairman, Professor Satish Dhawan, this task was appeared to be nearly impossible to achieve in 36 months, was finally accomplished in 40 months. I may mention these are all done in refurbished industrial sheds in Pinia, in the outskirts of Bangalore since there was very little time to create modern and wholly sophisticated laboratories at that time. Today, of course, the ISRO Satellite Center, more recently renamed as the UR Rao Satellite Center near HAL Airport, is a standing testimony of this remarkable achievement. At this juncture, it is apt to quote what Albert Einstein once said to a group of young students, and I quote, I rejoice to see you before me today. Happy youth of a sunny and fortunate land. Bear in mind that the wonderful things that you learn in your schools are the work of many generations, produced by enthusiastic effort and infinite labor in every country in the world. All this is put into your hands as your inheritance in order that you may receive it, honor it, add to it, and one day faithfully hand it over to your children. Thus do we mortals achieve immortality in the permanent scheme of things which we create in common. If you always keep that in mind, you will find a meaning in life and work and acquire the right attitude towards other nations and ages. My dear young friends, in the end, I would like to emphasize that as inheritors of a society which blossomed up great values of life and deep concern for human development, you should intensely aspire for deepening and broadening your knowledge, learn to experience the power of collective teamwork, and always be guided by higher values which you believe in. In all that lies before you, may God grant you wisdom, success, and true sense of fulfillment of your cherished ideals and goals. I wish you all the very best in your professional and personal life. Thank you.